Hey guys, welcome to Extreme Basics. I'm Ben. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at how to use the Bootstrap library to make professional looking, responsive, mobile first websites. So we're going to dive into some code and make a practical example. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you how to navigate Bootstrap's extensive documentation to be able to make your own awesome websites. Quick note, this video does assume you're already at least familiar with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But if you're not, that's okay. I've linked in the top corner of this video and down in the description to the web development playlist that this video is a Part of. And you just have to watch like the first three or four videos to get caught up to where we are now. All right, let's get started by opening up Sublime. So to open your project folder, you just go to File, Open, and then you select the folder and you click Open. Then to create our first file, we're going to do a Command N and then a Command S to save it as index.html. And now we just need to set up our HTML page. So we start typing it and Sublime will autocomplete it for us. Then in the HTML tag, we type lang equals en, and then we put in our character set declaration right inside of the head. And now this web page needs a title, so I think we're going to be making a blog today, so we'll call it blog, woot woot, yeah. And the last thing we need to do to get this web page all set up is include our external bootstrap file. So we're going to go to getbootstrap.com and scroll down, and we're going to copy this CSS and paste it right at the end of our head tag. And we're going to copy all these JavaScript files, and we're going to paste them in right before the closing body tag. Now we're ready to start adding some content to our web page. We're going to be adding a lot of predefined bootstrap classes and attributes to the elements that we're creating in order to access the pre-written styling and functionality. We start with an HTML5 navbar. Now this navbar takes a few classes. Navbar, navbar dash expand dash md, navbar dash dark, bg dash dark, and sticky dash top. And then inside of the nav, we're going to put a little piece of branding. We're going to do a link with the href attribute set to index.html and the name of the site in between the a tags. And then we just need to give this link a class of navbar dash brand. And then if we save it and we check out the live page, we see that we already have a pretty decent looking navbar. Now what we ultimately want is for all the links to be next to each other when we're on desktop. But when we resize the page, we want them to automatically move into a little collapsible menu system that we can toggle open and closed with a little button. So let's go ahead and make that button. We're going to start with an HTML button. We'll give it a type of button. And then then we're going to give it the class navbar dash toggler. And then inside the button, we're going to create a span and we're going to give it the class of navbar dash toggler dash icon. And now before we give this button the functionality to hide and show the links, we need to create the div to actually hold the links. So we're going to make the div and give it a class of collapse and navbar dash collapse. And now we need to give this element a unique ID and we'll call it, I think, let's say Jake Paul. Now we're ready to go back to the button and give it the attributes that Bootstrap needs to give it the functionality we want. So first we set data toggle equal to collapse and then data dash target equal to the selector for the element we just created. So hashtag Jake Paul. And then we have area controls equal to Jake Paul. Then we have area dash expanded equal to false. And finally we have area dash label set to toggle navigation. And now inside of our div, we're going to create an unordered list to hold all of our nav items with Bootstrap automatically reformatting all of the list items to act as our navigation links. So all we have to do to have Bootstrap add that functionality is give this unordered list a couple of classes, navbar dash nav and mr dash auto. So now we're going to create our first list item that will act as a nav item. So we're going to give it a class of nav dash item. Then we create a link with the class nav dash link and we have it link to our home page index.html. Then between the a tags, we'll just type home. Then if we save it and we go back to our web page and refresh, we'll see the toggle button appears. And when we click it, we see the home button. And if we resize the page, we see the nav bar automatically change from a mobile to a desktop version and back. All right, cool. Now let's create another nav item by copying this list item and pasting it down here. But this one's going to be a little bit different. So we'll give ourselves a little bit of space by moving these onto different lines. Then we'll hit enter a few times after the a tag to give ourselves a little bit of space into the list item classes we'll add add drop down. And then to the a tag classes, we'll also add drop down dash toggle. Then we don't want this link to lead anywhere. So we'll change this index.html to just a hashtag. And then we'll give this link an ID of applesauce. And now we'll give this link a few more attributes. We'll do data dash toggle equals drop down area dash has pop up equals true area dash expanded equals false. And then we just want to change this home here to let's say coding. Now, as you've probably gathered, this is a drop down menu item with sub items. So we're going to create a div to hold those sub items and we'll give it the class of drop down dash menu. Then it also needs an area labeled by attribute set to the ID of the element that controls it. So in this case, it's applesauce. And then inside the div, we're going to create a couple of links that will be the sub menu items. So we'll give them a class of 
drop down dash item. In this website we're building right now, it doesn't have any other web pages, but say in the future we make one called web-development.html, and then we can give it the title web development. And then we can copy this and create another submenu item and just rename it to game development and change this to game as well. Now we can clean this code up a little bit by just deleting this extra space, and then we can copy and paste this whole thing to create another drop down menu item easily. We just have to create a unique ID, so we'll call it chocolate chips, and then we have to change this to chocolate chips as well, and we'll change this to art, since that's another major thing that we do on this channel, and then we can rename this to drawing and we can rename this to digital art. And then we just need to update both of these URLs to match our new drawing and digital art pages. Now the last thing that I want to add to this nav bar before I think we're ready to move on is a search box and a little submit button so that people could theoretically search for the articles on this blog. So we'll just go ahead and create a form element and give it the classes form dash inline my dash two and my dash large dash zero. And then we'll go ahead and create an input of the type text and then we'll change this to placeholder and set it to search. And then we'll also give it the class classes of form dash control and mr dash sm dash two. Then we can go back and tab this in just to keep everything lined up. And then we can create a button called submit of the type submit. And then we want to give it the classes of btn, btn dash outline dash success, my dash two, and my dash sm dash zero. Now we can go ahead and refresh our live page and see all the work we've done show up in our collapsible menu bar. We can open these drop downs, they all look good. We can close them up again, everything's working. We can close that and resize the page. And we'll see everything just resizes itself automatically because it's a responsive nav bar. Now we've finished with the nav bar and we're ready to add some more actual content to the web page. So at the top of the page, above the nav bar, we're going to create a placeholder image. We'll give it a class of img-responsive and a width of 100%. And then the source is just a link to a website that creates placeholder images for you. So it's http colon slash slash via dot placeholder dot com slash the dimensions of the image you want. So in our case, 1300 by 200. Now we're just going to be adding some content to this web page. So we're going to make an HTML5 main element and give it the role of main in the class of container. And then we also want this page to have a footer. So under the main element, we're going to create an HTML5 footer element with the classes page dash footer, font dash small, stylish dash color dash dark, pt dash four, and mt dash four. And then inside of the footer, we're gonna create a div with the classes footer dash copyright, py dash three, and text dash center. And then inside the div, we're just gonna type copyright 2018 colon my website. And now inside of this main element, we're just going to start off by giving ourselves a little bit of space with a couple of break tags. Now I'm going to introduce you to what is likely a completely new concept and one of the core features and my favorite feature in Bootstrap. It's the ability to easily make responsive columns. I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, but let me explain. If you weren't using Bootstrap and you wanted to make two columns that were side by side, you'd have to use a lot of CSS and you have to know how to code it in such a way that when the screen shrinks, instead of shrinking forever, eventually you'd want them to not be side by side anymore, but maybe on top of each other. Well, Bootstrap makes this super easy with the concept of rows and columns. You first create a row, and then you can think of that row as having 12 sections that make it up. You can then assign as many columns as you want to take up a specific number of sections in that row. So say you wanted two columns that were exactly 50% of the page width. You would just set them both to six sections. If you wanted three columns that were all the same width, you'd just make them four sections each. If you wanted four columns, you'd make them three sections each, and so on and so forth. But you can also have the columns take up an uneven amount of sections. So what we're gonna do is create two columns with one taking up two thirds of the screen and one taking up one third. We're gonna do that by creating two columns with the first taking up eight sections and the second taking up four sections. All right, let's get started with that. So we're going to create a new div and give it a class of row. And then inside of that, we're gonna create two columns. So we create our first div to act as a column and give it a class of column-md-8. And then we can copy and paste that to create our second column and change the eight to a four since that's what adds to 12. Now we're gonna copy and paste this placeholder image from the top of our page into our first column and change it to 800 by 500. And then we're gonna put some of the blog posts meta info into the smaller column. So we're gonna start with a break and then under it, we're going to put a span. And then we'll copy and paste that break and span two times underneath. And inside of the first span, is where we would put the article category. In the second span goes the title of the article, so we'll just say this is the article title. Crazy things are happening that you should know about. Looks good. And then in the last span, we'll just put by Ben. And then around Ben, we'll put another span with a closing span after it. Now we want to create a custom CSS file. So we'll copy this link tag and paste it. We can get rid of this integrity and cross origin, and we can delete this link and change it to 
blog-styles.css. But this page doesn't exist, so we're going to create a new page and then save it as blog-styles.css and hit save. Now we're going to start selecting some classes and giving them some style. So we'll start with .main-article-title and we'll set its font size to 2em and font weight to bold. Then we'll select .main-article-category and .author dash name colon hover and we'll set its text color to RGBA 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 0.4 for 40 percent opacity black and then we'll select dot main dash article dash category colon hover and dot main dash article dash title colon hover and dot author dash name and we'll set its text decoration to underline and then we'll also give our footer some styling by setting its color to white and setting its background color so that it matches the nav bar by setting it to hashtag 343A40. Now we just need to assign these classes to our different elements. So the first span gets a class of main-article-category. The second gets a class of main-article-title. The third doesn't get a class, but the one around the name gets a class of author-name. Now we can save our code and go and reload our page and see all the work that we've done. Everything's looking pretty good as is. I think if we try to resize the page, we'll see that everything resizes pretty nicely. It all looks good still. I think this page just needs a little bit more content on it. Let's go up and copy these two break tags and then paste them right before the closing main tag. And then we're going to put in a new span and we're going to give it the class of recent dash articles. And in between the span tags, we're just going to type recent articles. Now we can go back to our CSS and just give recent articles some styling. We'll just say font size equals 1.7 em and font weight is bold. Now let's go back to our main page and just put an hr tag under that span and then we'll put a new div row. So just a div with the class row that will contain two div columns inside of it and we'll select these div tags and tab them in so they line up correctly and we'll give it a class of column md8 and then we can just go ahead and copy this column to create a second one and change it to four and now inside of our larger column we're going to create a new div row that will hold two more columns inside of it. So we're going to create another div with the class col-md-4 and then we're going to copy that to make our second column but change the 4 to an 8. And now we're going to go and copy the placeholder image from the blog post above and paste it in the first column and then select all the meta information from the second column and paste it into the second column here. And we'll just tab everything in like we've been doing to get it to all line up. Now we'll copy the article category in the break above it and paste it in right at the bottom and then we're going to change this main article category class to sub article date. And we'll change all of these main article classes to sub article classes as well. And then finally here we'll just add the class sub-article-author. Now we'll change this article category so that it's actually a date, let's say March 30th, 2018. And then I think we just need to change the title of the article to, let's say this is the title of the first sub-article. Now we have to go and define styles for all those new classes. So we'll select sub-article title and set font size to 1.5 em and font weight to bold. And then up here where we set the text decoration, we're going to add sub-article-title colon hover and sub-article-category colon hover. And then above that where we set the color, we'll select sub-article-author colon hover. And now down at the bottom, we're going to select sub-article-category and sub-article-date. And we'll set the color to 40% opacity black and the font size to 0 0.8 em. And lastly, we're going to select sub-article-author and set its text decoration to underline and font size to 0 0.8 em. Now we're just going to create another hr tag below this sub-article code block we've created. And then we can just copy and paste the whole thing two more times to create two more sub-articles. All we have to change now is the date and the titles. This one we can change to, you won't believe that this is another article. And we can set this one to, the best sub-articles on this page. Number three will shock you. And now we can just create like a little fake button to load more articles. So we'll create a div with the class text-write 
and we'll put a span inside of it with the class demo dash link and then inside of the span we'll just type more with a greater than sign now let's just quickly give the demo link class some style we'll set the color to blue and then we'll add demo link colon hover to the text decoration now very lastly we just want to put a little something in this sidebar column so let's put a span and we'll just type sponsors in it and we'll give the span a class of sponsors and then in our CSS we'll select sponsors and give it a font weight of bold and a color of 40% opacity black and then we'll just give ourselves a little bit of space by putting a couple break tags under that span and lastly we're going to copy this placeholder image and paste it here and just change it to 600 by 800 and that's everything so just save it all and we'll go back and refresh our web page and we'll take a look at everything that we've been working on and I'm actually really happy with how everything's turned out as you can see there's the main article and there's all these sub articles below it you could put an AdSense ad block there and maybe at the top here and if we scale this web page down we see everything still resizes really nicely so whether you were looking at this page on mobile or on desktop or a tablet it would all just look really awesome and really professional. Well, now you know how to make this web page, but how do you go about navigating Bootstrap's documentation to be able to make your websites exactly as you want them? Well, all we have to do is go back to Bootstrap's website and click on the documentation. And then if you already know what you want more info about, like navs, you can just type it in the search bar and it will give you all of these different navigation bars that you could add to your website. You just have to find the one you like. And then you can see underneath each example, there's the code that you just have to copy and paste into your project. And if you just want to know more about Bootstrap in general, you can just scroll through the sidebar here and take a look at everything that they have to offer. And that's pretty much it, because Bootstrap's documentation is incredibly extensive and incredibly easy to navigate. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!